it's a good, it's a good business model. Well, what you can do about it. Yeah. So the federal government has cracked down, and you must yeah. use it within a yeah. certain. In fact, we've got to declare before we even issue the bonds as to uh, the spend down rate that we're going to spend a certain percentage by a certain number of months, and then it's going to be fully expended by 24 months, I believe. So, so in that calculus, when you guys looked at it, it sounded like we pay a slightly higher bond interest rate, but we get more money up front. So the, the net effect of that is probably still a competitive market rate. It's, right? Yes, it was around two something. I don't have it in front of me. Right. But, uh, and, and again, what's curious is we don't ask for premium or discount. Mm -hmm. This is the way they come. And in the past, we've had some that are that have no premium associated with it. Uh, this time, they all had a bid premium as part of the proposals. Okay. Good news for us. <laughs> yeah, I guess, and I wish I could give you a more complete answer, but I'm sure it has something to do with some competitive tax advantage for them to, to package it this yeah. way. So that's pretty much us through March. Um, I did a quick look, and we have some... Our total general fund revenues are at 95.6% collected as of like today or yesterday. General fund expenditures are about 95%. That includes school, town, and uh, county. We have quite a few revenues that are uh, have exceeded their estimates for this year. Uh, excise, plumbing, building permits, electrical permits, various fines have uh, exceeded their estimates. The fire department revenues are at 108% collected right now. Most of that is inspections and special duty. The police also is over 100%, or they're just at 100%, and most of theirs is related to special duty as well. So oh, I, if I could just, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, j the fine side of thing, I assume, is that does that include, like, citations and parking tickets, or is that just building violations or code or whatever? Oh, no, this is... It's total fines across the town. It's the parking tickets, mostly parking, but, you know, dog at large fees. Sure. Or, Normally okay. police-related. Yeah. We have a okay. few fines Noise. that we levy for other reasons. Yeah. Okay. And okay. then... Uh, just well, just well, you. Yeah. And just a quick question on the, on the, on the fire. I know last year, I think we ended up adjusting the ambulance fee schedule. Is that what's generating some of the excess revenues, or was it not related to? Because uh, you said they were, the fire the fire was around 108%? Correct. And that's mostly with their fire inspections and their special duty pay. Um, oh, okay. What we do is when we receive revenues in for, for rescue billing, ambulance billing, we put that over here under our special revenue, and that accrues interest and and earns money, and then out of those funds, we say we're going to use some portion of that to fund the fire department services for rescue. And so while we might collect a million two, a million one sticks in my head, so that might have been last year's, uh, of that amount, we used 900000 this year. So that's kind of what they do. And the monies that remain there, we use for capital purchase. All your ambulance purchases yeah, are made out of are those funds. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's really more uh, indicator of development yep. activity in the community. Uh, right. Fire department has its own set of um, <clears throat> permits it issues and inspections it, it requires. So not unlike all the planning related and code enforcement mm -hmm. fees that are over um, expectations, that one is too. The only well, there are, while there are some individual lines that are overspent, legal is one that's uh, mm -hmm. pretty heavily overspent. It's, through May, it was about 55000 overspent. I tend to think that we've got all of June's bills to come through, so uh, that will be a pretty hefty one, which unfortunately also throws the whole admin department over mm -hmm. budget. budget. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. been pretty typical. The other one that's, mm -hmm. that's uh, really notably overspent is salt, which is not a surprise. I think we reported that to you. Yep. Uh, sometime early in the spring, and yeah. it's not gotten worse, obviously, at this point, but um, it's $108,000 overspent. That yeah. one specific line, his over Public Works' overall budget is only at about 97% spent, so they've, they're either making up for it or other things have, have helped that. Mm. But then he also has a lot of revenues that come in for vehicle maintenance and things, so I think that right. might tend to help offset He assured that. me he would be able to compensate for that uh, over expense elsewhere in his budget. Really? Yeah, I think he mentioned that when we had departments. Yeah. He did we knew it early enough that yeah. he was able to put some controls in place. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think, what do you think at the end of the year are we going to be on budget? Are we going to be slightly over budget? So we have some reserves? Because you kind of said at the beginning you think there may be, when you said we're at 8.88, but you think we might be able to bring that up a bit. So are you projecting that we're going to be ahead?
ahead of what we thought? I think we'll be we'll be around the ten percent fund balance. I think it, it's going to depend on what the year end. You always do adjustments the last, yeah. come in so, because so they always tend to come but, in. But what is that? That's another. That's a pretty significant number to go from eight point eight eight to ten. So you, our reserves will increase by a fund million balance. or so. It could increase by well, we have um, the school departments actually up a little bit on their state funding, which is nice. But a lot of these revenues, I think excise is going to be a couple hundred thousand when really? we're done. Um, we bumped that last year, too. We did. Yeah, but it's, I don't, it yeah, we're year. always, it's we like, be a, careful, but yeah, yeah, we always do it with caution because it's not so a, I, th I think between the revenue. Um, unexpected revenues, which, yeah. you know, all told might be $300,000 in and of itself, and the fact that we'll certainly be, not spend everything in the expense side, so there'll be some underspent mm -hmm. there, I, I, I would have to believe. I think we'll be close to it. I don't know that we'll be over it. Yeah. I could be wrong, but. Um, the good news is we're adding to fund balance, not taking from. Right, right. For certain. So, but I mean, that's, if, if it is 10%, that's, that's a great story. And you've met your mark. So you've met your up, met upgraded target, which mm -hmm. is great. Well, that's good news. Um, we didn't really go into too much, but the senior property tax relief fund uh, that you mentioned, are we... Is that fund depleted, or is there still reserves left in it? I think uh, we budgeted like 120 this year, and I think we spent like 180. So mm -hmm. right. we had like 120. I don't remember if yeah. that was last year's or this year. So we're right. either depleting it this year, or we've only got 60 left. Okay. I just we had to fund it fully. I think it was a full $200,000 in appropriated funds in FY19. So okay. I believe that reserve was fully depleted in FY18. And okay. then Hopefully, we'll be able to maybe start building it up a little bit. Yeah, and I, I'm, I mean, if, if anything, I think that's an area of investment that we we, we probably wouldn't hesitate to, to, to fund. Um, I, I'm just wondering if, if it's, we're always struggling with, is it being utilized effectively? You know, is it something that, do we need to, you know, increase the pool and keep the requirements the same because people need that? Or it, would it help these people who really need it if we increase the expenditure and, you know, how much they get. How much they get versus, you know, what they're, what, do we do a little bit for everybody? Do we a lot for the people right. who really super need it? You know? It's I a meaningful benefit for those who qualify. So right. 300 or so are, are right. maxing out this $600 benefit. As an aside, I will tell you, I have responded to probably six other communities who are interested in our program. Somehow mm -hmm. or other, actually, Jean Marie reported at a GP COG meeting, um, and that spawned a lot of interest. So mm -hmm. um, people are interested in our program, and you know, we're equally interested in what they're doing, too. So, um, to my knowledge, we've got one of the most successful and kind of the most robust, if you will, locally administered and funded programs out there. And to have spent the 180000 I, I think it's, I think it says a lot for what, how many people are actually starting to take right. advantage of the programs. Right. And right. Please recall, there's one small interpretation change that we've made that should qualify some new folks, and those are folks that live you know, on manufactured housing, on mm -hmm. leased land. That was a little nuance that wasn't really picked up, but we've modified the application, right. so there's several dozen, I suspect. But their tax liability is probably, I would imagine, considerably lower than a single family It home. will, but now that they can include their cost of monthly rent in, mm -hmm. that, in that calculation, um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we get several dozen folks that do qualify. Yeah, sure. Maybe not for the maximum, but right, right. meaningful nonetheless. How how are we measuring the the success of that? I mean, are we we're, are we looking at foreclosures? Are we looking at tax liens? Are we looking at you know um, how how are we determining whether that's getting the right reach that we're looking for? I know we just filed. Or we will be filing tax liens tomorrow. We mm -hmm. will be filing the same number of tax liens this year as we did last year. Okay. Our our measure of success has been how many people. People are reaching, and how much? What's the total dollar value? Are we getting back out by yep. way of rebate? Okay. Um, I'm interested to hear if there's other metrics that might be helpful to measure success. There are variables in that for eligibility that can be modified. Some of which could significantly increase uh, eligibility. It would be interesting to look at the historical data for the last 10 years and see. Have we seen a shift in our tax liens based on the age of the occupant? Like, are, no. since the program is targeted at seniors, even though we have the same number of liens that are being processed, are we seeing that that 
um, we also have more houses in town, so we'd expect, right. so we could yeah. actually, as a percent of houses in the town, if we're at the same number of liens processed, we've decreased yeah. the percentage of homes. Sure. Um, so it would be interesting, though, to see, are we seeing a shift in population that are, are using those liens? Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're using the, we're, it's, it's, it's being utilized effectively to the people who need it the most. You know, I mean, I, I'd hate to have somebody, I, I mean, I know we're, I, I, I want to make sure that it's getting in the right people, the right, and people aren't slipping between the cracks because obviously we haven't we haven't turned anybody away that needed it. Is that a fair mm -hmm. statement? Uh, well, you have to be eligible. Uh, that's what, but anybody who's qualified has gotten their yes. their yeah. their. That's the way it's set up. That, okay. Uh, okay. We fund all those that are eligible. Okay. It just means that if if six hundred is the maximum, they may not get six hundred. They may get something lower. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. And, and a lot of that data just stays with the at the assessor's office, so, you know, it's to provide some confidentiality for yep. those folks. Right. Yep. They'll yep. keep any tax records, and verify, and they take it back. Yeah, I, yeah. again, I just from, I want to make sure, A, we're funding it effectively, that it, if it's underfunded, we need to fund it properly, and it's reaching the people that it needs to reach, you know, so I don't, I'm... I'm I would say the fixes uh, would, would either look at the reducing the age requirement or the number of years to be a resident. Those two mm -hmm. things would potentially have opened up a lot of opportunity. Yeah, I, I don't want to catch all everybody. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I, again, like I said, I want to make sure the people who really need it the most are getting it. I just, I don't want to open it up to, to, let's say, somebody whose whose income is. It's a nice thing to have and not a necessity. It should be sure. more of a necessity than a. I mean, I, I'd like to take it. $600 off mine as well, if you well, could write that down. So I think but, through yeah. all the conversation, uh, a lot of it's happened by you up at the council table. Uh, people are aware of it, which is good. Yeah, I think it took us yeah. in the early years, some people just simply weren't aware it was there. So yeah. we're using every opportunity we can to make them aware, and I think the numbers show that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have any, do you have any more questions for the financial statements? I'm good for the statements. Nope. Quick, just another quick question, just on, just on format. I know. A while ago, we looked at this and we'd made some suggestions. I know in this packet, there's there's a lot of these that are a percent spent, but I thought we had had a sheet at one point. When you do the budget, do you break out the budget for by month or by quarter so we could actually look at what is the year-to-date budget? So in this case, it'd be what's the year-to-date budget through March versus what the in dollars and what the year-to-date expenditure and revenues are, so you can actually see a dollar variance. Oh, I think we had that, um, and I think I still have it. It's just a hidden column, but we can bring that back. Yeah, I, like. I thought that was that. That's easier for at least for me, and maybe some others. Just to, the percent spent or the percent collected is different than just seeing the, the what is the dollar variance. So yep. it, if you have it, and it's just a matter of pulling that cell forward. Yeah, I think that, we can that, do that would be great. Okay. Anything else, Chris? You good? Nope. I'm you good. On that? I'm good. Okay. Uh, and then <laughs> our next thing, I think, and maybe you guys, it's been a while since we've touched this. The next item on the agenda is 4B, which is really, we've been working probably for about a year on a new sort of debt financial policy. I think the last time we got together, we were pretty comfortable about where it was, mm -hmm. but said we're just going to take one more pass at it. In front of us, in, in the agenda was a document that has a lot of red in it. Are those all new comments since last time? Tom, may I? Yeah, go ahead, okay. please. So, um, all of the re so what we decided on the last time was yep. you guys approved all of the changes that were presented by staff. Yep. And that's what you'll see in the black strike throughs or underlines. Okay, so in this document you see, right on that page five introduction, you see all of that underlined black text. Yep. Yep. That's all stuff that you have already approved and we got through on the, the okay. in, before budget season started. Okay. What was asked was that we submit this document to Joe Kutara, our yep. financial advisor, yep. and get his take. And Joe, um, out, on top of being amazing in so many incredible ways, I sent him this document and within two hours he sent it back really? with all of the red that you see. <laughs> all the red. So, Right. Most of his read are things like we were missing an H in the word authority, yeah, yeah, and you know. So he's he's apparently an excellent um, grammarian as well as financial advisor. He's a great copy editor. I've asked if he could do all of our policies for us, um, and so most of the red is not substantive. Some of the definitions he's updated to be, I think, a, a better reflection of of language that we would see in in financial markets. Um, so. If you look at capital anticipation bonds, he's given us a definition for that where we didn't have one before. Um, nothing, in my opinion, that he has suggested is substantive. 
they are either grammatical or they are um, just clarifying with better industry language that we didn't have in our mm -hmm. policy prior. Um, I don't see any, I did not see anything that I felt was truly substantive, um, but I've provided you with all of his suggestions in red so that they pop out clearly. So, so going through that, there were two that came to mind for me. Maybe you can just address them on pages 8 and 10. Um, we're talking about useful life, and he's inserted language about 120% oh, yeah. of the projected useful life. Why, why would we want a, a life of the bond to be longer than the estimated value of the or the life of the asset. So I was wondering about that too when I when I first saw that and if you'll give me a moment to re I I, I agreed with you entirely. I was like why would we possibly yeah. do that? Yeah. But as I kept reading through it I understood his intent and agreed with him. So just give me a minute to remember okay. why I agreed with him. I think it's because prior we had the word average in there. So we think of a plow truck for instance as having an average lifespan of 15 years, mm -hmm. let's say, okay? Mm -hmm. So he's taken out the word average every place that he's replaced our language with that 120%. Yeah. I think it's connected to that. So whereas we before were saying that we're gonna base these bonds on the average life, um, he's saying, well, let's use 120% of the useful life. Now, I don't know why he feels that that's a better choice. He's consistent mm. though throughout mm. the document in wanting mm. us to switch to that. And I don't think that there's an advantage one way or the other. I don't think that it's giving us permission to say, well, we know we're only going to use that plow truck for 15 years, but we have now permission to bond it for 18. I don't think that that's his intent there. I think that he's saying that before we were saying, on average, this category of equipment gives us this, so that's what we're going to budget it right. for. Right. And now he's saying, well, instead of using that average, let's just say that you know, 120% of what, and I think he's using useful life to be expected life. So I think it's. If you're not comfortable with it, it's easy to take that out and go back to the word average. I don't think that that's a problem. It's a choice to your level of comfort. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I personally don't see a challenge with that. I think I, you know, the, the question becomes what's the average life? I think to, the, to Clarissa's point is if a plow truck average life is 10 years, we're going to bond it for 12 because we know even if the average life is 10, we're going to get 15 or 20 out of it. That might not be the ne normal average life of one. You know what I mean? I, I don't think it's a carp. I don't see that as giving us carte blanche to you know, just finance everything longer than the duration of right. it, you, you know. But I, 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 I mean, that's my only concern, that, that looking at it. Yeah, I hear that. Um, I would be more comfortable with going back to average useful life or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. But I, I, could, I, I could go either way. I, I, yeah. Well, I take that back. <laughs> 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 that's probably not the right line. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I, I said I, I, I see the I see the intent of putting a, a fixed number at it mm -hmm. as opposed to a, something that's not really tangible. Uh, the average could be a number of different things, um, but. Well, I, because on it's page 10, me. if you read his language, he says the project's yeah. useful life or the projected service life of the equipment, he's changed it from greater to will be at least 120% of the useful life or equal to the term of the financing. Right. So I, it is a little bit, I agree. I, when mm. I read it, I was like, well, Joe, why, why are we going around this? But mm. it, didn't seem, it didn't seem substantive to me. I was like, well, it seems like six yeah. or half dozen. Yeah, to yeah. me, it gives us a little flexibility as opposed to a hard stop of saying if it's if we determine the useful life or the industry standard of the useful life of a plow is ten years, we can only finance something for ten years. I, I mean, I, I I don't I don't see it as a big deal. So either whatever you're comfortable with, that, it doesn't matter to me. Average well, or one. Very quick edit. Yeah, stack the average. Yeah, doesn't matter. To me. Yep. Yep. And then the only other thing maybe you can speak to would be um, I, I notice he's. He has changed the language around we're going to have a financial advisor to a municipal advisor. And what, what sort of... That's don't? apparently an industry language change. So he, I, if I'm remembering correctly, he explained it that, that he's no longer called a financial advisor. He's called a municipal advisor or vice versa. I can't remember which way it goes because I did call him like, why? Yeah, why? Yeah. And he's like, that's just what I'm called now. That's what this type, that's what this position has been renamed. And As opposed your, to your policy highness, should reflect that. His fees go down with that. Yeah. yeah. Good, luck. Good luck with that. Well, I wonder if that's because of confusion with, as a, a personal financial advisor. Mm, it that, could be. That probably better does characterize the services he offers us. There were also some rule changes within the past couple of years that you couldn't be called and I don't remember what the right terms were, but if you were a, a specific type of person, 
then you couldn't um, do some of the financing. So like we have some business we do with J.P. Morgan and the guys said we had to sign off that we weren't using them to do bonding essentially, right. that we were right. only using them for investing because then if it got, somehow it affected that. And so, uh, and that was two years ago, so I apologize, I don't remember all the specifics, but uh, so that's why I think that might be part of it too. They have to be really specific about what they're doing so they don't violate SEC rules. I think it had to do with the SEC. So, so then did I hear all of you say that your recommendations to us is that this document is true to the intent of the last one we looked at with these, these edits, that you're comfortable with it, that you'd recommend bringing it forward to the, to the rest of the council mm -hmm. to look at it and work through? Yes. I think what we do for simplicity uh, is meld the two, Joe's comments and your comments, into one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everything yeah. becomes so black underlined? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, yeah. they won't discern yeah. right. where the changes come from. They're, right. All of them are now your recommendation. Yeah. So I had a bunch of, again, OCD, I'm sure that's why Joe's a good bond, uh, or municipal advisor, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I went through it with the engineering bent as well and found yeah. some, some typos and some, some more just questions of using an acronyms before they were described and that kind of stuff. So I'd be happy to make a copy and give you that, but just give it to staff for, sure. for uh, yeah. To, to paw through it. I did have two, I guess, somewhat substantive sub, 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 yeah. state, no, questions, really. Um, <laughs> bottom, bottom of page seven. Um, the very bottom line says, shorter maturity, sh maturity shall always be encouraged to demonstrate the taxpayer willingness to repay its obligation at an aggressive pace. I, I, I guess I, that my initial reading of that was that it's, that seems somewhat subjective. I don't know, or maybe that's just the, I was reading it in got up and walked away and came back again. I, I, that seems like it's more of a, I, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't seem like that was like a definitive point. You know what I mean? It's like it, it was, everybody wants to pay that off. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm curious of what, what the point of, what the intent of that statement is. I was going to say, yeah. the only thing I can think of is that he, Joe is always looking to make us look good to the credit rating agencies. Right. Okay, yep. and that's the purpose of the policy is to show credit rating agencies that we know what we're doing, we're taking it seriously. Okay. And I think that that language, instead of kind of this passive, that debt is being retired at yep. an aggressive pace, yep. it's saying that the taxpayers are willing to repay this yeah. at an aggressive, right? Okay. That I think that my, my understanding is that yep. Joe is polishing this up to look good and speak to what he knows the credit agencies want. Sure. Sure, and uh, yeah, that's fine. I just I want to make sure that it isn't implied that we're going to be aggressive on repaying all of our debt obligations because it's written down in here. So it's if that's just you know if that's Wall Street wording or wherever, the, wherever the bonding people are. Then that's how I, I would it. interpret that. But okay. again, if if you prefer the language the debt is being retired instead, it's an easy shift to go back to. I, I'm not. I'm yeah. I'm fine okay. with the way it is. I just want an explanation. Bond so. rating agencies like to see a certain percentage of debt retired within the first ten years. So yep. that's a big. Okay. Bit, so. okay. Uh, the next one was page 11. Under competitive sale, uh, middle of the paragraph, TIC. So I'm just going to read this because I had to read this five times and I still didn't get it. TIC is defined as the rate at which, as of the date of the bonds, discounts semi annually all future payments on account of principal and interest on the bonds to the price bid, not including interest accrued to date of delivery of bonds. See Appendix 2. I have no idea what any of that means. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. So I just, I put a star there, is it better definition or maybe a more clear definition? Because I, 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 I went through a couple times of that and I'm not sure I'm what. I'm not saying it's right, but uh, that was existing language. We didn't okay. have any changes. And okay. Well, to uh, your point, maybe we should. Yeah. Maybe a, late, a layman's term explanation or something in there or something just simpler because I read that a few times and just when I, yeah. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. So. Um, um, I'm, conf I'm, I will certainly. I don't know where we would go to look for that simpler definition and the fact that Joe didn't suggest a different definition, um, but I can cert between right. Ruth could maybe reach out to her, her peeps and I can reach out to right. Joe and see, you know, what do people have for thoughts? Or Does even work just for you? Work it, rework in the sentence a little bit because I read it and I'm going, I, I I'm not even sure on. it's a complete sentence. I, I know, that's why I was, I was. <laughs> because it says it's defined as the rate at which if you ignore some of that Right. All future payments on account of principal and interest on the bonds. Right, right. What? Right, right, right. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So yeah, we can All right. work with that. Good catch. Um, and that was, was that the last one? I think that was pretty much it. Um, no, actually, sorry, I did have one more. Um, we and we, I know we talked about this fairly extensively. Um, and I think this was existing, and I'm not sure if we were going to was in the in, in the in the text as well as last page, page 33, equipment reserve fund. Yeah. Yes. You know, we 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 kind of I think we kind of chewed on that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, reading it here, it almost sounds like it's done. <laughs> so we did talk about this about probably about a year ago when we first okay. started yeah. looking at these policies, and we're like, yeah. oh, hey, everybody, we have we it. have this thing, and we said that we would we do, do it, it six years from the date of the adoption, and oh, this policy right. was adopted in 2012. That's this year. Yeah. Right. So I think that what we have essentially done by not changing any of the language in there, if you adopt this policy as it is currently written, you've just bought yourselves till 2024 to figure out what you want that equipment reserve fund to look like. And I'm not saying that that's the right choice, but that's what that will do because it says very clearly yeah. that complete financing of the capital equipment reserve fund will be accomplished within six years of the date of adoption of this policy. And this is a new policy that you would be adopting. Okay. And so basically we're saying if you adopt this at the August meeting or July meeting, that we would then have until July of 2024 to have a fully funded equipment reserve fund. Or we could fund you? it within the next <laughs> yeah. 11 yeah. days. Yeah. Well, we have 700000 in the bot note. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I think we've had several conversations about it. I think conceptually we thought it does make sense. We should move right. toward that. Um, certainly not going to get there in 2018. I didn't think so, so either. But um, So if that's your interpretation that this, the date changes, then I mean, we're basically kicking the can down the road. But we have, I think, conceptually at least this finance committee, including Sean, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a worthwhile right. goal. Right. Something right. we should think about it. So yeah. I would be okay. I'm okay with it staying in. Yep, I'm fine. If that's the interpretation, I'm fine. I, I think that that is. The, yeah. I think that that would be a very fair and true interpretation, since we are creating a brand new policy that has yeah. that language. Yeah. And if you wanted to make it more aggressive, we can certainly shift that from six years to four, or you know, but or just leave it at the six yeah. and, and th work hard to keep it know. at six and put it on the agenda for future, you know, future finance. We make that put that up at the top of the list for in things this, to start looking this at. This task, Ruth and I, with um, providing to you really the amount needed to adequately fund the reserve. So okay. we, we, can, we can start that conversation and yeah. figure out how to fund it. I well, was going to say, if you wanted, Larson, I could work on that and then present that to you. As a I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, actually, that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and well, actually I was that. really going to take my name out of it. Too late. It's on the record. <laughs> yeah, it's on the record. Let the record That's reflect. <laughs> and that kind of feeds in the next time. So. Yeah, I'm done. Exactly. I'm done with questions. So I'll, I'll, I'm happy to make copies of this for you if you want the syntax ones. But otherwise, I'll just give them to the staff. And yeah, it's fine. Okay. So, okay. as I understand, I think where we are, a motion that this will it'll go back to staff to make the one change the change around 120 percent, mm -hmm. um, and to find a simpler definition for true interest cost if we can. Yep. And, and Chris has some edits or changes that he's he'll he'll give to you. Yep. So with that, as a motion. And then our goal would be to then bring this forward to the after those adjustments are done, bring it forward to the to the full town council. Right. I assume it would be either July or August, right? Either or. July at this point. Yeah. Same reason why not. So I think that's the motion. However. Yep. Yeah. So so moved. <laughs> uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? I guess that. Peter, I would um, like to chat with you. I mean, we spent a lot of time for the first six or eight months talking about some of the metrics and things built into here. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of the conversation yeah. that mm -hmm. we should just think about how to present that. I think you showed some of the dashboarding very preliminary to the council yeah. maybe yeah. a year ago, yeah. but um, I don't want to lose that in the presentation of a lot of words here. You know what I mean? I think many councillors would like to see just the one-page cockpit with the little date dials and the and the red yeah. colors on them, and this behind it, and they'll go, "That's cool. Look at the numbers." <laughs> <laughs> well, with with some so introductions, so I just think yeah. just to give some thought to that yeah. to make sure we yeah. can do it in such a way that it's understandable. Yep. Because right. so there's just a lot of words here. And right. Yep. Okay. Not a lot yep. of pictures. Not a lot of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think the the third item on the agenda, four C. This says financial model, but it's really was more just really trying to put it back on the table. We have this finance committee over the last three years. I've talked about at least trying to move to some type of financial modeling we can look at going forward to help plan, especially I'm 
one most recently was sort of we were just notified about some of the some of the, the schools and the requests for fundings and so I think again maybe put it back on the table I don't know what we can do I know there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of variables but again just just don't want to lose sight of it and I don't know how Chris you feel about trying to do something around financial modeling so we look a one two or three year window I know when we were looking at the bonds, there were certain windows of time when, when there became opportunities. If our goal is to have sort of level debt service, right? when some of those expenditures would make sense to try to... Right. Those types of things, I think, would be helpful in our continuing dialogue with the community about what does the future look like. And so, don't intend to solve it, but really wanted to ask, is that something we're still interested in as a finance committee? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it make that makes sense. We we've, we've been talking about it for a while, I, I, and I think the really the you know obviously the devil's in the details of what does that look like. Right. I mean, I can almost see us doing like we do. We started with the with the the, the um, valuation piece, you know, a, 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 an aggressive, a medium, and a mm -hmm. and a low. If we did that for, you know, as long as I, I my what I want to avoid is trying to get so into the weeds and the minutiae and the details that there are things that we're not going to be able to control that we're not going to have. There's a lot of intangibles we don't know. So if we can box that in a little bit mm -hmm. and still be able to look at the things that we can project, we have contracts, we can look at build those labor yeah. costs and that kind of general cost. Sure. I think we could probably, and I'm, I would look to staff, but I think we could probably capture 75, 80% of our expenditures, let's say, fairly accurately for two or three years out. Yeah, historically, I, I'm, I feel much more confident about our abilities to do that uh, that I did a year ago, frankly. I think a lot of the uncertainty on the revenue side in particular, mm -hmm. some of that has kind of worked its way through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Use of fund balance and the bond premium and the yeah. you know, questions from the state, a lot of that has kind of settled out. So I think I have a heightened level of predictability in the future that things can change. And I think we've always are capable of certainly doing the expense side. Right. Um, the debt modeling, I think we can get really fine-grained on. Mm -hmm. uh, we know what those expenses are today into the next 28 years or whatever the longest bond is. And it's going to be critically important as we consider reinvestment uh, when sure. uh, to be very smart and thoughtful about when to do that when we're shedding debt. But I think you were looking at more of an overall picture of the financial state of the town, right? Of like what, what surprises might be coming or what, you know, if we're plateauing with, you know, excise tax, for example, we're, we're trending that and saying, okay, it's been very healthy for us. That's a positive thing, but that's not going to last forever. Right. So, do, where do we see, you know, the peak of that? Do we see it peaking? Do we see it going up farther? What's that going to do? And at least spur the conversations. I, I'd also like to see, um, and we touched on it briefly, I think, with the joint finance. Um, I'd like to see the school put out some metrics, like we did, similar to what we did. Yeah. I've, I've asked that. This is year six. I've asked that, and three of which I was on the finance committee and the chair, so I can't really count those because I still didn't get them then either. So, um, but something, just something to kind of incorporate that, you know, whether it's, you know, we talked about all kinds of different variables. I have a couple that go in there, um, and then whether we do a model, we develop a model and ask them to kind of plug into it, or whether we sit down with them and say, hey, you know, what are your trends? Where do you see your base predictability? That kind of stuff, and and then try and incorporate that into the overall big picture. So I, I mean, I, 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 so moving forward, yes, I think we ought to put that back on the table, yeah. um, and then discuss kind of how we are going to approach that and what's that going to look like, what's the details that can look like. Or I was thinking if it's you know if it's appropriate, maybe turn it back to staff to kind of come back with a recommendation on what they can do with what they do know. Yeah, and and I think there's two purposes. I think there's, you know, to answer your question, I think there's two purposes. One, I think absolutely from the debt service piece. When we look ahead and we're talking about a community center, we're talking about a library expansion, and we're talking possibly about pretty significant investment in schools, mm -hmm. how we layer those in to try to keep debt service somewhat level. Mm -hmm. I think there are going to be pockets of time that those things make sense. It, it's so important to manage expectations by others. Mm -hmm. You know, the school trust, uh, the uh, library trustees are a different group. Uh, right. They need to have an appreciation when their time is, mm -hmm. when the time might be right, and the same is true with the schools. And of course, our taxpayers need that expectation as well. So there's that piece, and then yeah. I, sec I think the second piece is, which I think, as we know, I think we still have a lot of work to do in the community. How do we come together? That's a different conversation for a different day. But I think it would help the community if we say, okay, you know, in three years, and, and I like your idea. Not a specific number, but 
based on what we know today, this is what the range of tax increases might look like. So we can say we've got this, we've got this, mm -hmm. but the growth in the town and other things that we're doing are all in sync, and we're still going right. to be able to go down that pathway of 3% if that's the right number. Right, right. Or, gee, we might have a problem, mm -hmm. and, and how do we proactively get at that pro problem to make choices? Because making choices with a one-week deadline is not proven right. to be a great right. a right. great way to right. get community input on, on how we do that. So right. I think right. if it's possible, mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, we've talked a lot about it, but just, and, and with it, we have to be really clear, this is just a, a dartboard of possibilities and keep it broad enough so there's a range, right. Right. as you suggested, right. conservative and, you know, optimistic. Yep. At least we can say we're, you know, I bring some discipline to the exercise, yep. so... Does that make sense? Are yeah. you staff comfortable with sure. that? Sure. Uh, how about we schedule that general discussion on your next meeting, and between now and then we'll give some thought and yeah. kind of report out where, where we think we can, what we can provide to you, and we'll get some yeah. feedback as to whether that's the direction you want to go. That'd be great. If it works. I know that, do, we, we don't need, do we need a motion for that? We don't need a motion for that, do we? Nope. Do we need noted? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess with that, our next scheduled meeting is Tuesday the 17th. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to public comment, but I suspect there won't be any tonight <laughs> <laughs> based on the audience. Um, so I guess with that, it would be... Motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Second. All, let's All in favor. Let's yeah. do it. We're done. Second. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Enjoy the rest you. of your summer evening. Yeah. Get some sunshine more. Yes. Yes, 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 indeed.